nenyo mwenge nempuli ya kare nga mvude konze na siti ate gira vindu. Welcome back guys to yet another episode of the Cool Teens Pod Talk here at St. Bruno's SS Nabitalu. My name is Marf Mahane and today we're diving into another yet another deep discussion of various topics that tackle our day-to-day -day life. Today we're talking about HIV and its effects and affects, how it affects us and our day-to-day -day life in treatment. Over here I'm joined with a few students. I would not want to intrude, intrude by saying your names because I'm not sure of your names yet, yeah? But I would like you guys to introduce yourselves to the people before we go into our discussion. On my side here, what is your name, my friend? My name is Labu Emmanuel, a student of Senior 2 at St. Bruno Senior Secondary School. Thank you very much. On this other side, what is your name? My name is Namubiru Daisy from St. Bruno SS Senior 3. Yes, sir. My name is Pakaj Road, form for St. Bruno SS Navital. Now, uh, I want to ask a simple question. How do you find this school of yours? Anyone can tell me, how do you find your school? My school is located along Gaza Road, 11 kilometers to Zirobwe, and in Wakso district. Okay, he has given us the location. Now, how do you find your school in terms of being here? The school is really good. Okay. Since it's church founded, it's really good, more especially morally raising uh, students morally upright, okay. re religiously and academically. We have a record of attaining first grades each year. Okay. Last year we attained 36 uh, first grades and a few second grades, no third grades. Okay. We are really good and academically stable. Okay. Um, that's, a, that, that's okay, academically. I love that the fact that you brought up the academic part of it. And you, sir, how do you find your school? My school, talk about that side, my school is quite interesting because dearly we have tried to learn some new things from this place as she has told you that it's a Catholic founded school and we train various things here, games and sports, win various cup trophies and even participate in some other co-curricular activities such as drama, music and etc. Okay, now putting the extra aside, today I want us to dive into a deep topic concerning HIV and how it spread and its effects to the youngsters. HIV is very viral and many youngsters outside there are attaining it with, uh, with ignorance and need for pleasure. What do you think or how are the be how, how, what ways do you know of in which HIV can be spread? First, first of all, HIV can be transmitted through unprotected blood trans tra transmission and also playing unprotected sex. And I also want to inform the youth who is seeing, who is seeing me there that HIV, please, is waiting for you if you're not ready. Please, HIV, you should avoid playing unprotected sex so that you protect your, your life. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now on your side, what, what do you think are the ways this HIV is spread? First of all, some people attain HIV by birth. Okay. When mothers are ignorant, when mothers are giving birth and they don't know their status, hmm? they, they unfortunately give birth and infect their children through that process of birth. And the second way is through sharing sharp objects. For example, I might have a nail cutter. When I share that nail cutter, it's, uh, take a pic of here at school. Yeah. I might have my nail cutter on my key. Yeah. Mpaka wants the nail cutter to trim off his fingernails. Emma wants, his, wants the same nail cutter. And, un, and accidentally I cut myself. He will, uh, he will, I also share the nail cutter with him. He cuts himself. I might be infected. He might not be infected. And he gets the, the virus from there. And the other way is uh, playing unprotected sex. And this is most common in schools because for us in schools we are ignorant about some people are ignorant about the spread of HIV AIDS and its effect. So they actually play unprotected sex sometimes to please their boyfriends. Sometimes they play unprotected sex to feel mature or to fit in their environment. Mm. 
um yeah uh, to fit in they say they don't want to use the condom right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they say sweet you my yeah anyway on your side sir what is or oh, what ways do you know in which the hiv virus can be spread uh, speaking about that issue not forgetting that the hiv based on what we started in schools hiv is trans formed within people and transported within the blood cells so if at all there is two people a man and a lady play unprotected sex that is the one that we call usually the people call it engere yeah? mm. yes so if at all people play unprotected sex yeah. without the use of the condom or any other protectives mm. and one person is infected literally the another person shall be infected yes. maybe another issue is by birth yeah. we kind find ourselves that if at all a mother is infected and is hiv positive and if at all at giving birth daily precautions are not taken mm. the baby gi- gi- the baby that has been born may also suffer from hiv unless that usually these days that has been tried to be avoided by maybe carrying out certain operations to see that bo- babies born by infected mothers do not get mm. hiv but it's still a problem yes mm. then another another issue is by blood transfusion later ago we used to have in our tribes the baganda z and other tribes had to have used it to have what we call blood pacts yeah. whereby to show that your brother to show brotherhood amongst you yeah. you carry out blood transfusions whereby at all you join you cut yourselves then you join you striking your, a bone yes you yeah. strike a bone like that okay. yes but it was ended but it brought such calamities and dearly many people got infected and even nowadays yeah. due to the need of money where things are now monetary yeah. doctors instead of carrying out certain surgeries on blood and carrying out many tests on blood mm. they usually transfuse it to other people not knowing what diseases or virus are infected within the blood okay. wow you boinga you have some statistics of doctors actions <laughs> <laughs> wow those are i, I would need facts for that my surely friend. that's okay. my one biology hey, I, i like that i like I, i like the courage and confidence for that now that you know some of those things i would like to understand how best can we prevent this hiv from spreading from one person to another let's start with you sir <coughs> yes the prevention of the hiv you can prevent it in very many ways as the baganda says that there are very many ways of killing a rat mm. yes you can smash it you can put it in hot water you can also <laughs> use the poison but the ways of preventing <laughs> hiv one i'll start with uh avoid playing unprotected sex this sex Uh, you know there are some people at schools they are ignorant about unprotected sex whereby uh, the condoms also the condoms also if you know there are some people who have a higher influence now if uh, if you cannot you can use a condom but i'm advising you're not supposed to play sex before you are married that's why also our grandis they tell us that uh, during the eight years african traditional african traditional societies that they playing sex was If you play sex when you're still young they could even kill you that <laughs> yes that is uh, uh, that is it and also another way of preventing someone someone from having hiv is that avoid unprotected blood transfusion whereby there are people who go and trans but the blood is not well checked mm. by the doctors but they trans they, they transmit that blood to an individual and it may lead to the disease whereby uh, the population may decrease and the country start getting low taxes yeah. you're getting eh? sure. that is it okay now based on the fact that you spoke of eight years eh? yeah. if that rule was still in our years right now yeah. i'm thinking that every youth would be dead right now playing <laughs> session for marriage <laughs> uh, but yes <laughs> but it's not good <laughs> yeah we that, should yeah that's your opinion and i would go with that too eh? yeah. now on your side how do you think we can prevent hiv first of all There are several ways of preventing HIV from um, the human race. But first of all, I think the best way is sensitizing the mass. Most of the people don't even take HIV as a serious issue. Since now it's 
it's like macron that you find it here you find it there you find it here you find it there it's yeah. now the daily bread it's a trend eh? yeah <laughs> now people no longer even find it as a different even some ty- some nowadays the girls say i rather get hiv than yeah. getting pregnant uh-huh. that's what i was going to ask you going to ask you <laughs> getting pregnant and having hiv yeah that's what they say so i think they should sensitize the masses more about the effects of hiv mm. so that they can know that mm. hiv is not just like malaria that you True. get it today yeah. and you get cured tomorrow True. or you get you have the expectations of being cured they should know that hiv is a lifetime disease once you attain it it's like your face mm. once you look like your father you mm. look like your father forever until death ah! Wow. Yeah. So I'm guessing you look like your father. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is good. But, but the fact that you say that uh, many girls of late would rather go into pregnancy than uh, HIV. They want to they want to have HIV but not get pregnant. Yeah. Okay. They take it they take HIV to be anything yeah. and pregnancy to be more scary. Well, you better watch out outside there if you're a little lady thinking <laughs> like that. Sir, please tell us which ways can we prevent hiv from spreading from one person to another no the english say that each problem has a solution what we have to do is find a particular solution to the particular problem that we're facing yes, Mr. English. so if at all we're having hiv hiv first at all it's a, va- a virus and as we all know and for those that maybe are not sure HIV, as she has just said previously, HIV is a time life disease. Yeah. Once attained, you can never swell it off yourself. So, the best way the youth should avoid HIV, that is abstaining. I know it's difficult mm. to try and abstain, True. but it's <laughs> the best solution to do so that we can avoid HIV. And after avoiding HIV, by abstaining from sex by abstaining from sex we can stay away from hiv even without taking other precautions so on my decision that's the best decision that we can under go okay. and for sake all right now just to close up this question would you like to close it up with one more example yeah the other more example would be testing your partners mm. because you might be uh, looking at daisy i'm looking good okay. yeah looking and you <laughs> and you might be there saying ah uh, i'm okay. okay yet i have mighty virus in my blood yeah you come here we play sex me i'm okay because i know i'm already infected well oh, why you, you know to where you are yeah the the volume of hiv doesn't keep on accumulating eh? yeah so i infect you for you, you don't know that i'm um actually positive you go out there not knowing that you've also got that disease because I won't tell you. True, true. Since you've tested, why would I tell you? Yeah. Okay. Since you've tested, eh? So you're the girls, eh? I'm scared now, Daisy. Anyway, you have one last more, I think. Yes, yeah? I have one last more, and it's just that uh, <coughs> avoid bad peer groups. These peer groups, take an example. There's groups called, like, I, had, I usually hear it on the television called Abanabe Gaza. Mm-hmm. That group, mm-hmm. you know? that group there are very 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 many youth they lack jobs and they end up engaging things concerning sex remember that these bad peer groups they always influence those ones at school they, and they tell them why are you studying we started to get him we started to get money and we are outside working mm-hmm. you're getting it and now the student may be influenced and goes also to start working because uh, the friends are working to get money and he's studying and they tell him why are you studying because we start to get money for you in school why do you study why don't you come and be with us and we get money that's it avoid the bad peer groups they also they may lead you they usually say that the baganda usually say that uh, avoid that because when you also want to join those peers you will fail mm. and to fail to rise it will be difficult they usually say there is a man called Jacob Omtuze at uh, Dembe FM who says that if you don't respect your body, you'll get a disease that you respect in your whole life. HIV, HIV so far they say that it has no cure. 
it has no cure. But now I'm advising the youth who is watching me that, please, if you don't respect your body, you'll get a disease that you respect in your own life. Please okay. abstain. Okay, I like that. You said I'm not a dacology. Gassa. 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 <laughs> now, basing on the fact that there are people in the world yeah. that are living and walking with HIV, right? Let's say you have a friend, or let's say I'm your friend, eh? and I have HIV, in terms of stigma, how would you treat this person that has HIV? If he's your friend or your classmates, how would you treat this person? Your own kind of way. I would want to hear from each one of you how you would treat this person. Let me start with you. No, treat someone better if you want to be treated better. So, if at all in life we do take, we undertake some several precautions and other certain steps in life, as in some people don't give because they have much, but they give because they know how it feels not to have. So, in life, if at all I have a friend that is suffering from HIV and I know, mm. I would dearly treat that friend of mine like a piece of glass or even a thin piece of paper that if at all at any stage it falls on water or if, if at all it gets trampled upon by any other person it will get stranded and damaged so if at all i have a friend and i know he's suffering from hiv because i know deep inside him he has very many thoughts since hiv is not cured he knows his life is on stake any time from now he may die Yes, not sorry to mention. Any okay. time from now, yeah. he or she may die. Mm -hmm. So I treat that patch, that person each second I have as if it is the last time, as if it's the last second I have to stay with him. Okay, I like that. Now, your side of the story, how you will treat somebody with HIV? I will treat that person that has, that has HIV like any, normal, any other normal person. Because they say too much of everything is always bad. Like here at school, the person has HIV. Maybe you're the only one that knows that has HIV. Mm -hmm. But you be like, the person is okay. You'll be like, let me go and get for you, Posho. As if he's normal. I could treat that person the way I would treat you. I would mm -hmm. treat Mpaka. And uh, I would make sure that person is not segregated. Mm -hmm. And that person would feel at home. No home is a feeling. Now imagine people are segregating that person and they go to find out how would you treat that person for you? Would you keep on no. their side or go with the others? I would welcome that person mm -hmm. the way I welcome a baby. Okay. And I would also cancel that person because he's not the only person that has HIV in this whole world. Mm. And um, they say I come see, never, told, never brought out a good sailor. So all those hardships in life, because of HIV and what, they aren't going to break your what, but they make you more skilled. And that person will even, um, will not be like those other people that say, since they have segregated me, I also infect them so that they also get that feeling I'm feeling right now. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that was a great one. I liked the saying you just said there. It was really good now. Ending with you, your side of the story on how you treat somebody with HIV? First of all, I will talk about love. Love is a strong feeling towards something. But the youth, the youth who is seeing me there may think that the love I'm talking about, I'm not talking about that love which you know, but I'm talking about this love whereby God sent his only son. And I'm talking to this love whereby those people who are suffering from HIV, they're also human beings. You know, there are some people uh, who get that disease when they are born. Hereditary, whereby that disease uh, it, may, it may be transmi tra transferred from the mother to the son. Whereby now, how comes that that son I treat him like somebody living in in bush? Is is he is in, in an image of God? Whereby I have to also treat him in a way I treat I treat myself, and like the way I treat I treat other members. Whereby he al he is also a human being like me, and and love also brings makes them that. He, uh, brings brings good luck to them. They also start saying that they're also people like us because those people when you start neglecting them They usually uh, they, they may end up even committing suicide 
you get in it yeah true 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 yeah. we don't want people outside there to commit suicide so if you're outside there and you have the hiv virus or maybe you have the disease it is best that nobody in the community judges you by your actual disease or whatever you're going through it is best that we welcome them and help them out to go through this current stage they are going in now with all these effects people know that hiv is dangerous right and there have been there have been medicines that have been placed in stores to help somebody that has HIV to go through it, okay? But there are very many students, so let's say young people, that have this disease and this virus, but do not want to take the tablets. What do you think is the major cause for students or youngsters' refusal to take the medicines that help them during HIV and AIDS? Let me start with you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, those medicines, those medicines, the ARVs, yeah, they are too big. Whereby they are too, you know, uh, I've never seen it. You know, we usually carry research during this curriculum of ours. Uh, I have ever seen that ARV. Now, that drug is a bit large, and somebody who is 18 may, uh, it may be difficult for that person to take that drug at a daily routine. You're getting it. Eh? Now, first of all, these drugs, when, uh, when you take it, uh, now you know. Those those things, yeah? uh, they are they are, they are what they the 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 esophagus is is a bit not wide. Whereby that drug to to enter in the body, it will be a bit difficult, and it requires somebody to take a lot of water. Whereby it will be difficult for that person to take to take that drug. And another and a, another thing is, uh, you know, those the ARVs have specialized time to take them. Whereby uh, I may be having the drug, I have to take it at exactly. Mm, at exactly 10 yeah. 10 p 10 a.m mm. yes and in the morning i'm coming at school whereby i don't like my friends to know that i'm taking the what mm -hmm. the drug mm. now I, I i i just leave it at home because i don't like my friends to know that i'm i'm suffering from that <laughs> yes from that disease yeah so you know you don't <laughs> yes tablets, right okay now what other opinion do you have based on that as about my first opinion is ignorance there is propaganda that is passing around that says ARVs are no longer effective. That once, uh, even if you keep on taking uh, the ARVs, they even make the situation worse. So there is these uh, herb herbalists that have come up with their Chigana medicines. Uh -huh. There, the youths are distracted from taking mm -hmm. ARVs and they be like, let me take the, the shortcut. Hmm? Uh -huh. <laughs> they be like, instead of taking the Chizungu medicines, why don't I take my lo uh, local medicines? Uh -huh, Kasa, they, may, uh, they, also, they can also cure me. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, the ARVs are very many. Yeah. They, in, in those days, I saw someone taking ARVs, but it was like, uh, the ARVs, the ARVs were more than the food he was eating. They were very many on a plate. They were smelling very bad. So mm. I think that's one of the reasons. They are very many. Mm. They have a, they have a bad, they smell bad. Mm. Somebody really gets so tired. Irritated. Yeah. Someone gets irritated of taking uh, these many tablets that smell bad on a daily basis. This is true. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And lastly, okay. you know, having a disease, inside your body knowing that even if you do what even if you do what even if you undertake any other precaution even if you do any other thing that disease shall never get healed in you so some people have it like in even if i take these arvs still makes the same zero equals to o o is zero the reading differs but the letter stays the same so people take it like as even if I take ARVs I'm not going to get cured as in just imagine if at all you have something and even if you do and it, it is deep inside you you know that even if I do anything even if I do what even if I undertake any other thing I won't get healed and not mentioning literally we Africans are ignorant yeah.
Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> we are. They used to tell us an African listens through Chiboko. But uh, ah, I pray that Africans step out of the ignorance to now be aware. And self-awareness is key. So if you're outside there, be aware of what is in the world outside there. My name is Mav Mahani. You have been here with us here at St. Bruno. Saint Bruno SS of Navitalo, right? Yes. And it's been a great discussion over here with the youngsters on HIV. I'm hoping that if you're outside there, you have learned and unlearned some things that you don't know. My name still remains Mark Mahane here on the Coatings Sport Talk. Till next time. Bye-bye.